candidates running for Minnesota governor hit the road the last few days on the home stretch to the primary. All five candidates hoping to replace outgoing Democratic Governor Mark Dayton fanned out across the state. The DFL endorsed candidate for governor Aaron Murphy made a campaign stop in Bemidji on Saturday. Murphy was joined at the Paul and Babe statues by Secretary of State Steve Simon and Julie Blaha, who was running for state auditor. The Bemidji Mayor Rita Albright was also at the rally to give Murphy her support. Murphy says she believes she has the head, the heart, and the experience to lead Minnesota, and she believes that is what will help her win the race. But I'm running because I want to build a future with the people of Minnesota. I want to focus on education, single-payer health care, investing in our infrastructure across the state of Minnesota. But I also believe in a kind of politics that takes on our toughest issues, and that includes things like renewable energy and tackling climate change. It means taking on the NRA and advancing gun violence prevention. The NRA's got way too much power, and I'm the only candidate in this race that's consistently earned an F from the NRA. One of Murphy's opponents in tomorrow's primary was also campaigning in Bemidji this weekend. On Sunday, Congressman and gubernatorial candidate Tim Walls flew into Bemidji with Congressman Colin Peterson. Walls met with supporters at the Bemidji Regional Airport while stating his case on why he should be Minnesota's next governor. During his stop, Walls spoke about what's been dividing the state and what needs to happen to move Minnesota into the future. This is about a one Minnesota, about a Minnesota that cares deeply about uh, uniting us, making sure that we're bringing folks together for problem solving. And I think we've made a campaign from beginning end that was positive, that was hopeful, that brought us in. And, and now we just need to execute. And I said whether it would be my, my time as a coach or my time in the military, I know that execution and planning happens on the front end. We're there. Now let's just get our people to polls. On the other side of the ticket, Republican candidates for governor have been out in full force as well, stumping for last-minute votes. Michelle Fishbach spent the day traveling across northern Minnesota today and made a stop in Bemidji. Fishbach is running as lieutenant governor with former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. She says that her experience combined with the former governors gives their ticket an advantage. He knows what's going on. That's number one. He knows what's going on, and we are taking a look at things like, first of all, we are looking at that middle income. We're really going to be focused on that middle income. And the other thing, you know, as, as chair of higher ed, when I was in the Senate, I was chair of higher ed. We're going to be taking a look at education. We're going to be taking a look at the vocational training. You know, I, I focus on the higher ed and looking at that uh, where they can get those programs in um, in the two-year colleges. Donna Bergstrom, who is running alongside Jeff Johnson for the position of lieutenant governor, was in Brainerd today in preparation for tomorrow's primary. Johnson is the Republican-endorsed gubernatorial candidate. He's running against Tim Pawlenty for the Republican ticket in the Minnesota governor's race. Bergstrom joined Johnson's campaign this year and as a retired lieutenant colonel of the U.S. States, United States Marine Corps Reserve, brings a vast military background to the campaign. Jeff is really a person of principle and character, and that was one of the reasons that I said yes when he asked me to run, is because those are two rare qualities in politics today, and they really shouldn't be and don't have to be. So I know that when Jeff is governor, he will lead with honor, and um, he will do the right thing, even if it's difficult, and even when no one is looking. The primary election is tomorrow, with most polls opening at 7 a.m. and all closing at 8 p.m. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution to Lakeland PBS.